Welcome to Well Crafted Studio. I'm here to help you live inspired and create with purpose. So let's get started. So today's tutorial is one I'm super excited to show you guys. We're going to be using the Cricut Maker's new engraving tool to engrave silver spoons. So we're going to be making a bookmark and there's a couple challenges that we have to kind of overcome to do this. Um, one thing I realized was that we need to be able to size the spoons appropriately in order to actually engrave on the middle of them. So there are a few tutorials out there that kind of helped with that and they all suggest templates. So I made a couple templates for you. If you go to wellcraftedstudio.com and you go to the library, then page down to the templates for projects. Now this is a free resource library that I have for my email subscribers. So right under project templates, you have the silver plate spoon template upload, the silver plate spoon template PDF for printing, and the spoon bookmark engraving design. So now the silver plate spoon template is one that you can print out in your printer and then you can actually use the spoons that you have and size them up so you can decide which of the three different options best fits your spoon. Then you'll see what I'm talking as we go through this. Then we have the silver sp plate spoon template, it's like three times fast, silver plate spoon template upload. And this is actually the file that you'll be uploading into Cricut Design Space. And then the spoon bookmark engraving design is the design that we'll be putting on the bookmarks. You can create your own designs using your own text in Cricut Design Space, but for today, I wanted to give you guys one to make this you know, super easy so that you can just grab these and go. So go ahead and upload these to your computer. And then we're going to be over in Cricut Design Space. Okay, so the first thing to do is to go ahead and grab those files that we had just downloaded. So I've already done the I like big books and I cannot lie, but I'll show you how to do the template because it's the same process. So we're going to upload image and then I'm going to grab the PNG file. So right here we've got it. It's already got the transparent background. So we can do simple and continue. There's nothing to select or erase, so we just go to continue again. And then we're going to save it as a cut image. And there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that image into a canvas. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that there's a great big square there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the arrows here and we're going to drag it into to make it smaller. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to fit that square box into a one inch box. And it should fit perfectly. Okay, so there we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, call that good. All right, so we have that and it's all ready to go. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna help us size this correctly so that we can then size our image. So let's go ahead and grab that image and insert it. insert image and we've got that there and we're gonna drag that down a little bit smaller but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to duplicate so this is highlighted right now it's selected and we go to duplicate and we do it a couple times so now we have three of these and I'm gonna go ahead and select them all so they're all gray right now and then I'm gonna go up to align and I'm gonna choose center so what this is doing is it's giving us three different cuts all in the same um, spot. So when we go ahead and engrave, it's going to actually engrave over this three times instead of just the one time. So it gives it a little bit more of a deeper cut, which is going to help us, um, it's going to help show the engraving just a little bit more. 
So I like to do that. You can do it three, four, five times. I don't know when it gets to be too much. Um, I've just done the three times and it works really well. So now we've got them all three together and we've got them aligned. So we're gonna go ahead and attach them. Okay. So grab that little handle again and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out which one of these three best mark matches the spoons that we have. So I'm assuming that you guys are actually already flattening your spoon and I've got in the um, tutorial on the blog post, I'm actually gonna link to a video that I found on YouTube that shows you how to do this really easily. Um, I thought I could show you, but it's, this is really, they did a really good job. So I'm just gonna link to it. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys that this is the PDF printout. So what I did here is I printed it out and then I have my silver spoons that are already flattened and I can go ahead and whichever one I'm gonna use, I can go ahead and try to match it to the size and the shape that most closely resembles what it is. So I think we're gonna go ahead with this far one on the left. That looks pretty good. And then we're gonna go back into Cricut. And so I'm gonna drag this over to here and I'm gonna size it so it fits, oops, it doesn't really matter, I guess. So it fits. I might have to go ahead and select it over there. But actually that looks really good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm noticing right now that that center line kind of goes right through the B. So that looks really good. Okay, so we're gonna go with that. Easy. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we are going to say make it. Oh, wait, forgot to engrave it. So I'm gonna go back. So what I forgot to do is I forgot to change the line type on those. So I'm gonna go up here to line type and with those three big books selected, I'm gonna go down to engrave. So that's gonna change it so that those are all engraved lines. All right, so now we can go ahead and we can choose make it. So first thing you'll notice is that this is not on the same mat. So what we want, we wanna use the template and we want it to use it to kind of position. So we need to go to the second mat and we're gonna click on that and there's the three dots in the corner and the option of hide selected or move to another mat. We want to move this to another mat. So we're gonna go ahead and click on mat one and confirm it. So now both of our designs are on the same mat. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to tape down my spoon. So when you do the spoons, it feeds into the machine this way. So I think the best way to do this is to go ahead and flip it over so that it feeds into the machine with the bowl part of the spoon. So I'm going to go ahead and find the six and then the five. I can try to line it up perfectly there. So it's right in the middle. We want it to be straight. So we're gonna be cutting that handle off and you can either do that before or after you engrave, but I think it kind of helps to um, position. And then it also, um, when I tape it down, it kind of gives it a little bit more stability. So we do want to use masking tape and we want to tape it all down. Now the goal is to keep the flat or the flat part of the spoon as uh, 
pressed to the mat as possible. And so that may mean that the end part of the spoon does come up just a little bit. That's going to be okay. Now you don't want to tape over the spot where you know you're going to have your design. And you could probably use a little less tape than I'm using. <laughs> you want to tape all sides. So I'm making sure that it's the spoon itself is really stuck to the mat. And then the tape itself is going to be rubbing onto that really well so that it's really secure. So as you can see, it's very important to line up your spoon before you tape it down because it's not moving once you do. Now I do suggest that you have multiple spoons ready to go because um, you know this still is not ex an exact science. No many, no matter how many precautions we take. So silver spoons, there's a whole bunch of different places to get them and I actually talk about this a little bit in the blog post. What I usually do is either check Craigslist pretty regularly, often at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> um, or what I ended up having to do after a while is I uh, checked eBay. Now eBay often has a lot of spoons and you can buy them in bulks, um, lots. And I actually decided, didn't like I over time, cause I use um, the spoons for jewelry, for bracelets, for all kinds of things. I kind of found which styles that I liked the most. And then I went ahead and on eBay, I could usually find those and purchase those. The spoons themselves are silver plate, which means they're a softer metal than stainless steel. It's kind of a vintage spoon and well it is a vintage spoon and let's see if there's anything else to tell you about them. I think that's it for right now. Okay so we're all done and I'm going to go ahead and position on the screen. Go ahead and connect those. Actually, I don't think I can select both of them while we're on this mat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this one and using the little arrow, rotational arrow on the side, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it around. So now the spoon that we're using is the one over here. And on my mat, I've got it at the five down and six in the middle mark. I did a really good job of getting it right up to that line. So on the template, I drew lines down the middle. And the kind of cool thing is that Cricut kind of, when you have this design, it turned it into a, a like a outline. And so you can actually see that line and it goes right down the middle. So that's gonna help us. So now we're gonna take this one and flip it around. And we're going to put it right how we had just kind of decided before with the line going right through the B. And if you need to get closer, you can. We're working it with a pretty small design. So I just want to make sure that I have space around. Oops, I have to go smaller in order to move them though. There we go. So I wanted to move it down just a little bit. Oops. I really wish that we could select it while it's bigger, but we can't. Okay, so now I think the design is maybe just a little bit too big. Cuz 
because as I'm looking at it close up, it really kind of wants to hit the edges there. But I say we try it. So let's look again. And it is close, but it's not on. So, so we're going to go with it. Now what we need to do is hide the template. So I'm going to go ahead to those three little dots again, and I'm going to click Hide Selected. So you see how it just kind of magically disappears. So there we go, and now we can click Continue. So at this point, Cricut, before you can actually proceed, it's going to connect to your machine and just check that it's, on, that, that it's there. So now we're going to go ahead and set the material. Because we chose engraving, it's going to give us the engraving options. So I already have stainless steel selected as a favorite. To get a favorite, you just kind of click that little star when you see the whole list. Um, I haven't really tried brass or um, copper, which are the other options for metal. The stainless steel works great. So I'm going to select that. And it's telling us that we need to make sure that we have the engraving tip in, which I do. Click that in. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and load our mat. Double check that that's all stuck down still. And it says load tip, clamp B, load mat, press go. Okay, it's not, oh, there it goes. So when it starts blinking, that means it's ready to go. Okay, so it's all done cutting, and what I first noticed is that I didn't tape the bottom down as much or as well as I could have. And so it did kind of come up, but it didn't stop the machine and it didn't catch, so we're kind of lucky that way. So I can go ahead and unload my mat. I shut that. Let's have a little more room here. And okay, so I'm gonna peel this off. And then just kind of a little trick is we have all these little metal shavings here that are displaced because of the engraving. So I'm just gonna take my tape and get those. Just kind of peel them up. So you don't really wanna brush metal ever just because it could get stuck in your hand. So if you don't do the tape thing, then you're probably going to want to go ahead and use a bit of a steel brush or something, steel wool. Okay, so there we got it, and you can't see real well right now, but we're going to go ahead and add some enamel um, using the Impress Art enamel pen. And there we go, I'm going to go get that and we'll set up. Okay, so we're ready to darken our metal lines. So to do that, I have the Stamp Enamel Marker by Impress Art. You can use a black Sharpie. That's kind of a little known tip. However, I really like the stamp of mark, uh, the enamel markers. It's a really dark, deep black, and it gets right down into those um, grooves. So we're going to do this. We're going to just go ahead and take it off. And I'm going to fill in the lines like so. So the stamp enamel marker, the company Impress Art created all these for metal stamping. And this project that I'm doing with the Silver Spoons is one that I originally did with metal stamping. So we're going to let that sit. So I just, on my blog, I just did a post on stamping metal keys. And again, that same premise of that is um, something that we can go ahead and take into the 
Cricut engraving tool, and we can use that same process of creating a, a key necklace, only instead of metal stamping, we can go ahead and engrave it. So this is an example of a bookmark that I did that is stamped. So what we're still going to do is we're going to cut this and then we're going to bend it. Okay, so I've waited a couple minutes for this to dry. And I'm just going to rub it back with a paper towel. I don't know if you can see this with the glare, but that does look really good. So if you want to, you can go ahead and repeat the process if it didn't get quite as deep as you want. And I'm noticing now that the, now that I can see it a little bit better that I did go off the edge of the spoon just a little bit with my design. So I might want to do that again, but for right now, I'm just kind of excited that it didn't stop the engraver or jam anything up. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the end, the end of our spoon off and then we're going to go ahead and pound it flat and then grind it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the handle, then we're going to grind our hammer and then we're going to grind it. And then we're going to bend it. So I have a couple of them done here. So I'm just going to use this 12 inch bolt cutter. I think I got it at um, Harbor Freight. I'm just going to go up here probably about an inch, inch and a half, and then just go ahead and close that. Sometimes it requires kind of holding the spoon a little bit. And there you go. So really nice little cut there. And then I have this extra little piece I can use later to make a pendant. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and finish the spoon's handle. So we've got that cut on there and it's kind of rough. So what we want to do is smooth it out and kind of flatten it a bit. And in order to do that, we're going to be using this anvil, which I got from Harbor Freight, the little impress art hammer that I have. And um, it's got a ball peen hammer and that's really what you need is this ball because that's going to kind of push and, and uh, move the metal to flatten it. And all you have to do is go ahead and hold it and then hit right here. And you're kind of hitting at an angle because you, again, you're kind of pushing the metal to get it to where you want to go. I'm gonna flip it over. Okay, so as I was hammering, I was kind of adjusting just a little bit and holding it at a little bit of an angle. Because what happens then is it's getting it smaller or kind of um, flatter and flatter at this end as you go, kind of splaying it out even more. So you just want kind of something kind of flat. And then um, it is pretty um, sharp right here because the metal kind of moves unevenly. And so what we want to do is go ahead and grind that next down. And you can use a file or at, again, Harbor Freight. I have this little mini tool grinder that I got and polishing wheel. And that is going to have a, gr it's got a grinding wheel over here and it's got a polishing wheel here. And again, not very expensive at all and a lot of fun to use. So when I use this, there's a little plate here and I'm just going to go ahead and hold it flat against the plate and then just keep kind of turning it. I'm just trying to knock these edges down. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so it's it's nice and smooth here now, but it still has a little bit of roughness down here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and then just kind of hold it against lightly. And I'm not pushing or forcing at all. It's really light movements. I'm letting the wheel itself do it for me.
Okay, so I can touch this now, just running it over, and I don't feel any burrs. It's nice and smooth, and we wouldn't want it ripping the page, being that it is a bookmark. Okay, and so now the next thing we can do is go ahead and bend this handle. So I'm going to grab my pliers, and you can use a vise if you have one, just to insert and then bend, but this works perfectly fine too. So the metal's gonna wanna bend at its thinnest part, and so it's not gonna wanna bend up here, it's gonna wanna bend here. And we wanna put the pliers on the other side of where the bend point's probably gonna be. And then we're just gonna go ahead and create an angle here. And I'm pushing against the flat side of the bowl because I have more leverage. So it's a little bit more of a 90 degree angle right now. And so at this point, what we can do is take it back to our anvil and we can go ahead and just knock this down a little bit more. Okay, and I just want to mention again that this is only really possible because I'm using a silver plate spoon, which has a softer metal than stainless steel. So we want to leave a little bit of a gap here because that's where the, it's going to hook the pages. And it's a little bit wide right now. I think it's about a quarter inch. So that's going to hook a lot of pages. So I think we're going to just go ahead and do it a little bit more. We just don't want to do it all the way down. And if it was to go all the way down, then we could just take the pliers and bend it again. No big deal. All right, so there it is. So now just the finishing touch, so I'm going to use the grinder again, but I'm going to polish it. So I use the polishing wheel, and I'm using these two different um, sticks. One of them is red usually, and one is white. The red is more of a rougher. Um, it's got a little bit more pumice or sand or something in it, and that's going to take that finish. It's going to like kind of polish it up a little bit, and then this one's going to polish it up a lot. So you start with the rougher and go with the smoother. And to do this, we're just going to turn the wheel on. I'm going to apply some right to the to this felt roller here. And then I'm going to use this. So, cool. Okay, so this is a poli uh, the polishing process is one that you can repeat over and over again until it looks the way you want. So it does heat up the metal, which doesn't bother me, but that helps kind of melt the wax a little bit. And just rub it with your paper towel. It's kind of like magic. It's all like dark and got wax on it. It's kind of icky, and then. You use this and rub it back, and all of a sudden it's pretty and shiny and lovely. I love it. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat this a few more times and just kind of really shine it up. But I like how with the shiny part that now I can go ahead and see my... Um, my engraving just a little bit long or a little bit better and uh, I think that it looks really nice I just wanted to point out too that if you wanted to kind of bend this all the way this would make a really good um, what do you call it um, necklace pendant maybe we'll do another video on that all right so I'm gonna finish this up and I'll bring you guys back and show you the finished product okay so I finished shining this one up and I hope you can see here and I'll take photos too but and have them on my blog post but this one is the one that we just shined up and it's really 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 shiny and what happened is we lost some of that darkness 
So it has kind of your typical engraved look where it's it's just the metal has been engraved. So this is the one that we didn't shine up and you can see the lettering a lot better because that darkness is still set into the groove. This is actually a um, stamped one that I did with metal stamping, which is the traditional technique. And that, you can actually see the letters a lot better, I think. However, you're limited to the fonts that you have or the ones that you've purchased and the designs that they um, have already made out of metal stamping. So it's, it's a much more limited, I believe, than what we can do with the Cricut because with the Cricut, we can do, again, any design that we want. We can draw, we can type, we can do anything we want. So there's a lot more possibilities here that I really think for you know people who want to be creative. So the bookmark itself is something that is actually really pretty popular at craft fairs. Um, people like the vintage. You can also take your make maybe your grandmother's silverware or um, if you find some somewhere else like eBay, that's great too. I actually went and found my grandmother's set or style, um, but not her particular. It's not hers, but I found it on eBay, um, the style that she used for her wedding silver, and then made um, jewelry out of that. So that's kind of a fun way. And for Christmas, a good idea is to go ahead and take that same silverware or something like it and create ornaments. So I think you can do a lot with this. I'm excited to see what you do. Thanks for watching this tutorial. And if you found it helpful, please like, comment, or subscribe below. And for more tutorials like this, visit wellcraftedstudio.com.